God, we thank you for another privilege. Thank you for this, another opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for this, your word. We pray tonight, Father God, that you forgive us, that your word will fall on good soil. Bless us tonight, Father God, that we will walk in your word, that we will realize the power and the strength that comes from your word. Encourage us tonight, Father God, that we will walk with you, that, Father God, we will always depend on you to feed us, to lead us, and direct us. And, Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. study here again tonight. Tonight we are in Psalm number 42. Psalm number 42 is where we are tonight. We want to address the issue of depression, discouragement, and disappointment. Amen. Depression, discouragement, and disappointment. Mm. Depression, discouragement, and disappointment. Amen. Psalm number 42, Psalm number 42. The soul has pains. In other words, the soul has problems. And in the text, you will find that the psalmist is talking about his very own self when he talks about the soul. We'll look at these 11 verses tonight and, and see if we can encourage somebody. See if the Lord can set you free on tonight. So Psalm 42 deals with rejoicing in the midst of what's going on around you. Amen. People are hurting. People are sick. People are disappointed. Yes, sir. People are discouraged. Mm -hmm. And people are even depressed. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. All around us, people live in depression every single day. They live in depression. But I believe that the Word of God has an answer for us tonight. All right, man. We have to get to a point where we live through and live past and live beyond our circumstances that are surrounding us. Look at how the psalmist begins. He says in verse number one, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so panteth my soul for you, O God. In the midst of your depression, in the midst of your discouragement, and in the, the midst of your disappointment, your soul, your body, your mind, your heart are a pant for God as a dear pant for the water brook. This word pant means that you long for, you cry out to God himself. Don't get so disappointed that you can't trust God anymore. Don't get so discouraged that God is not on your radar. And do not get so depressed until you take God off your agenda. The psalmist realizes that he's depressed. And we will find out through the rest of these verses the reason why he's depressed. He has enemies. You may have an enemy tonight. 
Your enemy may not come in the form of someone with weapons, guns, and knives. Your, may, your enemy may just be sadness. Your enemy may be confusion. Many of our enemies have become depression, disappointment, and discouragement. We have come to the point in, in this life where we are disappointed in people. Because people can let us down. People will say they're going to be with you through thick and thin. And when the thin come up and the thick gets gone, they're gone. The psalmist, the psalmist says, even though I'm in the midst of disappointment, even though I'm in the midst of discouragement, my heart pants, my heart yawns, my heart longs for God. We ought to long to be in his presence. We ought to long to be, be set aside, set apart with nobody but us and God. The psalmist said, just like the deer when he's tired, when he's thirsty, he pants for, he longs for the water brooks. He longs for rivers of water. We ought to long for God. Don't get so discouraged until you turn away from him. The psalmist says in verse 2, he says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. My soul thirsts for him. I'm, 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 my soul yarns for him. My, my soul longs for him. My soul looks forward to being alone with God. We are, we are moving every day a thousand miles an hour a day. And they tell me, and I'm beginning to believe it, the older you get, the faster time moves. <laughs> They tell me that the older you become, you don't have much time to make a difference. It has been said that the older you become, you realize that you got more years behind you than you have in front of you. You can't afford too many mistakes. We have to come to realize that if we're going to thirst and hunger for anything or anybody, we must thirst for the living God. The only God that lives, you know, in, in biblical days as it is today, people have their own gods. They have gods who have feet that they can't walk. They have hands that they can't work. They are made of wood, they are made of metal, and they cannot feel the affections of a man or a woman. But the God we serve, he is a true, he is a living, matter of fact, he is the only living God. That means that our God is alive. Our God is well. Our God is active. He's the true and the living God. He is God himself. He is the exceeding God. Not only is he the exceeding God, he's the God above all gods. The God that we see here is the God Elohim. And in many terms, when you use the word Elohim, it means several small gods. But when Elohim refers to the true and the living God, we understand really well who we talk about. <laughs> we talk about the exceeding God, the true and the living God, the Jehovah God, God himself. So now when Jehovah's Witnesses tell you you need to be a Jehovah's Witness, you let them know, I am a Jehovah Witness. I witness to Jehovah himself. The almighty, the all true, and all powerful God. The psalmist says in verse number two, when shall I come and appear before you, God? The psalmist is ready to get out of here. He has come to the point where 
He's so depressed. He's so disappointed. He's so discouraged. He's ready to appear before God. Have you been there? Have you ever gotten to a point when you say, Lord, just go ahead and, and take me now? Let me suggest to you that you allow God to make that determination. Don't you dare make that determination. So the psalmist says that he is at a point of depression where he just really want to meet his maker. Let me tell you, life can get so structured sometimes that you're ready to meet your maker. Life can be so disappointing, so discouraging, and, and so defeating mm -hmm. until you come to the conclusion, as the psalmist has come to, that you're ready to meet your maker. Look at what he said. He asked a question. When shall I come and appear before God? Ready to just give it up. Ready to throw up my hands and holler. Ready to get out of here. But hold on. The psalmist does have good news. In verse 3 he says, My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, Where's your God? Now the enemy is tormenting him. Taunting him. You know, referees get excited when athletes taunt each other. This is nothing like the taunting of athletes. This taunting is taunting one who is with God, one who believes in God. Those who are enemies around him are taunting him and asking the question, where is your God? Now, here you are, a big time God follower. But look like your God is nowhere to be found. You, you, you proclaim him as God, but it looked like your God has disappeared. You talk about him and how big of a God follower you are, but the fact of the matter is your God is nowhere around when you really need him. Have they ever told you that before? Have anybody ever told you that you, you trusted in a dead God? They call your attention the first the first uh, First Kings chapter 18, when you find Elijah on Mount Calm, and he's there and he's fighting against 180 prophets. 180, uh, 800 brother, 850 prophets. Elijah's on Mount Calm, and he's fighting against 850 prophets. They have a contest going on on Mount Calm. And the deal is made. The table is set. The God who answers by fire is the true and the living God. The God who rains down fire from heaven is the true and the living God. The Bible says, the Bible says that uh, those who followed Baal and the, those who followed Jezebel, those who followed the, the God of the groves came up to 850. They had a chance to call on their God first. The Bible says they called from morning to noonday. And their God didn't answer. Elijah began to taunt them. Ask them the question. Where's your God? Where's your God? Have you not answered? Well, because he's a God, he could be busy. Maybe you ought to search for him. Because he's a God, he could be on a far journey. Maybe you ought to call your God a little bit louder. Elijah begins to taunt them. So the enemy will always ask the question, where's your God? As the story continues, they called upon the god Baal. He didn't answer them. They began to cut themselves with stones, become their only sacrifices on Cal, on, on, on Mount Carmel. Then became the prophet Elijah's opportunity. Elijah says, well, I tell you what you do. You, you build the, the altar, you put the bullock on it, you put the sacrifice on it, 
Um, you dig uh, dig a hole, uh, a trench around the altar, pour water in it, then they pour water in it, pour some more water in it, they pour water in it, pour some more water in it. And he called on God, the God that we serve, the living God, the true and the living God. And Elijah said to them, the God who answers by fire, then he is the true and the living God. As the story goes, Elijah called on God, and God sent fire from heaven. It burned up the bullock, it burned up the altar, and it licked the water out of the trenches. Because he is the true God and the living God. So the enemies asked, asked the psalmist in the midst of his depression, where is your God? Why don't you call on your God? Verse 4 it says, When I remembered these things, I pour out my soul within me. He pours out his soul. He pours his out, he pours out his soul before God. He didn't tweet it out. He didn't email it out. He didn't message it out. He poured out his soul. This word soul is his very own self. He, he gave all of himself to God. Let me tell you, when, you, when, you, when you're in trouble, you, you take yourself back to the manufacturer. You, you, don't, you don't go get a shade tree mechanic, mechanic when you get a brand new car, do you? You take it back to the dealership, the manufacturer. And when you take it to the dealership, you know they ought to be able to fix it. So he says he pours his soul out. The soul that is within him. This word soul means his very most self. His innermost being. He pours himself out before God. I'm just trying to get somebody delivered from depression. De delivered from disappointment. And delivered from discouragement. In essence, I'm trying to get somebody delivered from defeat. The enemy, the devil, wants to defeat you on every hand. That's right. He wants you to believe that you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. He wants you to believe that the mistake that you have made, you're going to be doomed for it. I want to serve you notice on uh, serve notice on you, uh, and that is that we all make mistakes. Right. And your mistake is no worse than my mistake because all of it are mistakes. And because they are all mistakes, we got to look forward to the manufacturer to fix it up. Guess what? We tried to fix it. We've tried it ourselves. We've, we've gone to him. We've gone to her. We've gone to them. We even tried it. And nothing can fix it. Like God. He goes on to say, when I remembered these things, I poured out my soul within me, for I used to go to the multitude. Look at what he said. He said, I used to go to the folk. I used to go to the multitude. I used to go to a lot of people. We just, we just go from one person to the other and get opinions. Go from one person to the other and see what that one has to say. Let me just share with you. We have to understand that if it's going to be fixed, God has to fix it. And God has given psychologists, God has given doctors great sense. And, and when we need help, we need to go get help. You're not crazy because you go get help. But wherever you go, take God with you. Whoever you meet with, take God with you. For I used to go with the multitude. Say, so used to hang out with the multitude, used to go with the multitude. He used to go with the mother too. I went with them to the house of God. He used to hang out at the house of God. He used to be with the great numbers in the house of God. Let me just share with you. You can be in a room in a house full of people and don't be there. Have you ever, have you ever been there? Yes. Where you're in a room full of people. A house full of people. In church where people are. And you're really not there. I think the R&B singer coined the words very well when he said, 
Your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. There are many folk in church on Wednesday, in church on Sunday, whose bodies are here with me. But their minds are on the other side of the country, on the other side of the world. So he says, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. He says he went to the house of praise. He went to the house of God. He was there with a multitude of people, and they were having a good time. Guess how I know they had a good time? They had a feast. They were eating. They were singing. They were praising. They were, they were having a good time. They had the voice of joy and the voice of praise. And you ought to do that, shouldn't you? You, you ought to be in the house of God in such a way that you give honor and praises unto him. But for some reason, I'm beginning to see tonight that even though he was with the multitude, he wasn't with God. Don't let people fool you. People will be with you and not with you. People will be in the house of God and not with God. The psalmist says, I was with the multitude here. And, and we kept a pilgrim feast. We celebrated with food. Verse 5, he says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you required within me? What's he talking about? He's talking to himself. Talking to his very own self. He's talking to his soul. He's asking his soul, Why are you disquieted? And when he says this quiet, and he's talking to his soul, and he asks his soul, why are you in such a rage? Self, why are you in such a rage? Why are you in such a state? Self, why are you what you are? Why are you doing what you do? Why are you responding this way? I told you on Sunday, you better talk to yourself. I used to see, see my grandparents and my mama still doing it today, talking to themselves. That's the person I live in the house with sometimes. I'm trying to figure out if she's talking to me and talking to herself. <laughs> but I say to you today, you have to get to a point in your life where you talk to yourself, but when you talk to yourself, you better tell yourself good things. Because some people talk to themselves and they talk themselves right in trouble. But here, the psalmist, the psalmist began to talk to himself and he asked himself, why are you so caught up in this depression? Why are you so caught up in this disappointment? Why are you so caught up in this discouragement? Why are you self so defeated? Somebody tonight need to ask themselves that. Why, why am I living such a defeated life? Why am I so discouraged? Why am I so disappointed? There are people who are disappointed with people, and then there are people disappointed with God, and there are people who are disappointed in yourselves. But I want to tell you tonight, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't stop worshiping the Almighty God. He goes on to say in verse number five, hope in God. He says, hope in God. He says to us, whatever you do, in the midst of what's going on around you, you need some hope. This word hope means to trust. This word hope means to tarry. You see, young people these days don't know much about tearing before God. Let me tell you, when you tear it before God, when you hope in God, you have great expectations from God. And when you tear it before him, God is able to speak to you. God is able to deliver you. God is able to give you hope. So the psalmist says, hope in God for I shall yet praise him. Now look at it. It looks like two separate people having the same conversation. But it's only one person having the same conversation with himself. You better talk to yourself. 
He says, he says, self, I hope in God. Self, I shall praise him. Self, for the help of his countenance. For he countenance is the face of God. The glory countenance is very on his face. He says that I'm going to bring my countenance, my face in the countenance in the face of God. And when you talk to yourself, just don't be talking about crazy stuff to yourself. Talk to yourself about the Almighty God. He says, self hope in God. He says, self, I shall praise him. So he's having this conversation and he's telling himself, now look, self, you need to get it together. Because I am going to praise him. I'm going to praise him regardless of how I feel. I'm going to praise him regardless of what I'm going through. I'm going to praise the Lord. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Somebody needs to hear that when you talk to yourself and yourself is trying to tell you, you are, you are not going to make it. When self is trying to tell you to give up on God. When self is trying to tell you your disappointment and your discouragement as well as your depression is so great that you're already defeated, let me tell you what you tell yourself. Self, come on, get it together now. He said, self, come on, get it together. He said, he said self, now God has given you another chance to get it right. He said to himself, he said, self, as long as you're on planet Earth, as long as you got breath in your body, God can use you. That's right. Not only can God use you, God can not only use you to bless you, God can use you to bless other people. Right. He said, now, self, get out of that pity part. Mm -hmm. Self, come on now, come on, self, get it together. Uh, you, you, got to, you got to get in the face of God, and you got to allow God to get in your face. How many times you have to tell yourself to come on? Now you have to get up here now. You can't, you can't, you can't sit in the corner and ball up in a fetal position. <laughs> you can't, you can't let it defeat you. Say, so come on, Sam. Come on, talk to me. Anybody ever been there other than me? You, you been there? I mean, where you just want to give up on life? Where you just want to give up on God? Well, things are just not going your way. And it seems like the more I pray, the deeper I get. It seems like things are overtaking me. But I hope in the Lord. The psalmist said we got to hope in the Lord. Verse 6, it says, oh my God, my soul is cast down. Now he stopped talking to himself and started talking to God. And he's having a third person conversation to God as if the second person is not present. He says, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Now here he is, a trichotomy man, talking to God because the man is his body, spirit, and soul. So he's talking to God about his soul. And he tells God, my very own inner being is cast down, God. My very own self is trying to give up on me, God. And not only God is he trying to give up on me, he's trying to give up on you too. It says, oh my God, my self is cast down. My soul is cast down. Therefore, I remember you from the lands of the Jordan. And from the heights of Hermon and from the hills of Mesa. What he's saying here is God has blessed you before. And you need to remember what God has done for you. You have to give your testimony of how good God has been. Have anybody in the room been blessed by God? Have God ever pulled you out before? Don't you know the same God that has pulled you out of it before he can pull you out of it again? 
He can pull you out of it now. The God we serve can do anything to anybody. So he says here, you want to recall those moments when you walk with God, God walked with you and God pulled you out. God will pull you out. Amen. So you got to talk to yourself and then you got to talk to God. And I guarantee you, God will talk to you. Talk to yourself. It's all right. I know some people, I can, we could be having a meeting and there's a particular person, we could be in the middle of a meeting and there's a particular person start talking out loud to himself. And the, the thing that I found out that when he's talking out loud to himself, he's talking about what's going on in the room and doesn't know he's talking out loud and telling everybody what he really thinks about what's going on in the room. So this is Richard Holiday. So, so God... God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. God has a way of blessing us in the midst of our depression. You know how many people are so cast down? How many people are so discouraged? How many people are, are so, so demeaned right now? You know how many people that all it takes is a, and you can push them over. Some would say I'm depressed. The some would say I'm discouraged. The some would say I'm disappointed. But guess what the psalmist says? I'm going to yet praise the Lord. I'm going to yet put my face before him. And he tells God that my innermost being, my soul, myself, is cast down. My soul, myself, is on the break. Have you ever been to a breaking point? Anybody, anybody ever been to a breaking point where, where you just you just can't stand one more thing? You just can't take one more issue? The psalmist says you need to talk to yourself. And the psalmist says you need to talk to God. And when you talk to God, don't tell God about other people. Tell God about yourself. So he tells God about his very own self. Have you ever just gone to God and said, God, I'm depressed right now. I'm discouraged right now. I'm disappointed right now. Be honest with God. Why do you want to be honest with God? Because he already knows. And he's the one that can help you. He already knows. When he says he's cast down, his, his, his soul is in a crouched, humble position. His soul is so beaten down until... He, he's been over, discouraged. The psalmist in Psalm 42 says, look, 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 so you're going to have to get with it, man. Mm -hmm. He says, you, you got you to gotta honor God. You got to praise him. And then he says, remember what God has done for you. And if we were to say it in our terms today, we would say, remember what God has done for us. Remember the testimony of God. Remember how God has brought you. Remember how God kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. God has done it. I wish I could sing that song that Celine Dion sings. Oh man, she put it together. When it, she says, when I couldn't speak, you spoke for me. When I couldn't help myself, you helped me. Right. She was talking about some man, but look at me. I'm talking about God. Right. She says, you made me strong when I was weak. The psalmist, the psalmist says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call on God. And he goes from one verse to the other, back and forth. He's looking at his problems. But then he looks to God. Look at verse number, number seven. He says, deep calls unto deep at a noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. So when he says deep calls to deep, what he's saying is this thing has gotten so bad, it looked like I'm drowning in water. 
and it looked like the water is calling for more water, and I'm in the deep water, and more water is calling to more water. He's discouraged. He's depressed. He's disappointed. He's defeated. And he's at the edge of death. He says, deep is calling to deep. He says that, that these waters that's flowing over me is calling for more waters to flow over me. But the good thing about deep calling to deep is when you at the worst state in your life, you are a call to God. And so we are to find ourselves in deepness. When we find ourselves in deep stuff, mm -hmm. then you call to the one who is deep, God himself. Deep is calling to deep. Deep is calling to deep. Call to call on God. He says, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. He says, these waves are calling on other waves to the point where these waves are coming over me and these waves are trying to overtake me. And these troubles are calling for more trouble. Isn't that something? These troubles are calling more trouble until it becomes a flat waterfall. I can't climb up out of it because the water is hitting me again. And every time I go one step up, the water knocks me back down. Deep is calling to me. Have you ever been there where, where you take two steps forward and then something knocks you three steps back? Has anybody been there? Have you been there when you decide to give your all to the Lord, something else shows up and knocks you down again? And it's not the person that's your enemy. It's the circumstances we find ourselves in. That's right. And check this out. Many of our circumstances we bring on ourselves. Right. <laughs> Just be honest with you. This, this psalmist is honest with himself. The, the psalmist is saying, now, Steph, you're not motivated at all today. How many of you decided just to stay in the bed? Just don't even get up, don't even walk outside today. I mean, it's 75 degrees, sun is shining, everybody's riding around and, and, and doing great things, going places and, and, and celebrating there in a feast, but you just balled up in a night and you can't move. He says, all your waves and billows have gone over me. I mean, this stuff is tough. Children think they really got it tough. Now, they're having to deal with stuff we never dealt with. They're having to deal. They believe that because they can't be like the person on social media, they're not very much. But let me tell you the secret. The people on social media go to model homes, take pictures, and make you think that's their home. They go uh, test drive cars and make you think that's their car. They go to uh, Fortune 500 companies and, and take pictures with signs and take pictures with furniture and you think it belongs to them. Well, first of all, it's all TV. It's all social media. It's all fantasy. And not only that, just because somebody else got it, you don't need it. The waves come over us and, and they beat up on us. Verse number eight, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to God of myself. A prayer to God of my life. He says, one thing I know about God, God is going to come through for me. He says, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. The Lord will com command 
his loving kindness in the daytime. Let me tell you, even though you're guilty of sin, God has a way of blessing you and keeping you. He has a way of giving you another chance. God does. It's his loving kindness. Same as his mercy. Not because you deserve it, but because he's kind. We woke up this morning not because we deserve it, but because of his loving kindness. We made our way to the house of the Lord, or we made our way to, to the internet because God is so kind. He is just so wonderful. He, he has amazing grace. He's given us another chance. He has given us another chance to get it right. We don't care anything about the Bible. God has given us another chance. We don't care anything about worship. God has given us another chance. His loving kindness shows up in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with us. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. His loving kindness shows up in the morning. And then he gives us a song to live by, even at night. And you don't even have to be able to sing. He gives you a song. Praise team sung a song Sunday. What was the song? They sung a song, and it was been in my spirit. At the mention of their name. Jesus, is, I, I went around the house singing it like I could sing. Mm -hmm. But God has given me a song. And the, these, these, this word day and night refers to when it's going well, it's the day. Mm -hmm. And when it's going bad, it's the night. Yeah. The Bible teaches that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And let me tell you something. I take God at his word and I ask God, well, how long is this night? God, you said weeping may endure for a night. And you say joy coming in the morning. God, I'm looking for the morning time, but I've been struggling in this night. Now, God, tell me, how long is the night? Look like the night is more than 12 hours now, God. The psalmist encourages us to talk to ourselves and then talk to God. You might as well be honest with him. That's right. How long is the night? Came out here, 1985, worked a year and a half, got laid off Ooh, for the night. No family. It's a long night. Lord, how long is the night? God bless me with the day. But let me tell you the good news here. God not only bless us in the day when things are going well, he also bless us in the night when things are not going so well. Right. Has he done it for you? Yes. Have you noticed that he did it for you? Will you agree that he's done it for you? Amen. Goes on to say in verse number eight, that the night is it gives us a song. Verse number nine. I will say to God, my rock. He says to, that he will say to, to God, his his rock, his his stronghold, his tower, his his solid place. You've heard how some preacher close it, don't you? They took a rock and put around my rock and laid my rock on a rock because my rock is Jesus and I went as down as far as I could go and I landed on a rock. Yeah. He, has, he has become my rock. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemies. Check this out. This psalm is vacillating just like we do. <laughs> See, we got to stop looking and staring at our problems. We got to glance at our problems 
and look to the Lord. The Hebrew writer says, looking ever to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So yeah, we got problems, but he says, lay aside every weight that so easily beset us looking unto Jesus. Because Jesus is the author. Jesus is, Jesus is the finisher. Jesus is the one who has our faith. And Jesus is the one who has our best interests at heart. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Let me tell you, trouble will make you think God has forgotten you. Situations will be so bad sometimes you think that God has walked away from you. Trouble has a way of clouding your view of who God is. He says, I'm walking around mourning. Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? He says that I'm mourning, I'm I'm in mourning because I've been oppressed by the enemy. Let me tell you, we've been endures for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Let me tell you, the fact of the matter is, God will make you run and fly like the eagles. Young men will give out. They will faint. Those who are strong will shut down. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and not give up. God will mount them up on the wings of the eagles. And they will take flight. I'm oppressed, Lord. You got to tell God I'm oppressed. I'm being oppressed by my boss. I'm being oppressed by the homeowners association. I'm being oppressed by friends. I'm being oppressed by enemies. God, I'm being oppressed. Verse 10, as with a breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all the day long, where's your God? Check this out. You are doing so bad until your enemies see you're doing bad. And they keep right on taunting you. Where will you stand? How do you get the victory? What do you do when it comes to your depressed situations? How do you handle disappointment? Do you go fighting? Do you go cussing? Do you ball up in a knot and say, Lord, I give up? How do you handle it? The psalmist paints a picture that it is common for us to vacillate. It is human for us to think well of God one moment and know that God is with us, and then the next moment we ask God, God, where are you now? Somebody is going through a trying time right now, and they want to know, God, why have you left me out here? And the enemy is still coming upon you asking the question, where is your God? So we have to carry ourselves in victory. The enemy wants to know, where is your God? The enemy wants to know, why have God forsaken you? Verse number 11. Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. Talk to his soul again. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you bowed down? Why are you so disappointed, O oh my soul? Check this out. The more the enemy taunts him, the more he talks to himself, and the more he talks to God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? The word soul, again, is his very, very innermost self. And why are you disquieted within me? 
So he asked, he asked himself, he asked his soul, why are you disquieted? This word disquieted in the original Hebrew means to be enraged. You know, people do things that they do because their, their innermost being is enraged. Their very own self, they're, they're just discombobulated. Then he reminds himself, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance, countenance in my God. Says, hope in God. The psalmist spent 11 verses in Psalm 42, talking back and forth to himself. He talks to God, then he talks to himself. Did you notice he didn't talk to the enemy? He talked to himself, and he talked to God. You know, I don't have to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I can call on Jesus and Jesus rebukes the devil for me. And these things we, we may do, we, 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 we may rebuke him in the name of Jesus, but the psalmist gives us a great example of who God is. He calls him his rock. He calls him his Elohim. He calls him the living God. And that's what we need to call on. In the midst of depression, in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of disappointment, in the midst of defeat, and even when we walk in the shadows of death, look and hope on God. Amen. Any questions or comments? Because he's our rock, he's our stronghold, he's our power. He is with us. Anybody who's asking questions tonight? I appreciate the session tonight, Pastor, and your teaching because uh, that is what I did constantly. But uh, I also I talk to him constantly. And at some point uh, I've been told just give it to us. We're going to work it out. And I have seen that happen. Right. People, people are depressed this season. Holidays are coming up. They don't have what they want. They don't have the money they want. They're not with the person they want to be with. People are just dropping in depression. But the psalmist says tonight, hope in God. Put your faith in him. Seek the face of God and allow God to seek your face. Bring your face in the face of God. Questions or comments? Is you don't have to be depressed. Trust God. The psalmist said, hope in God, trust in God, talk to yourself, and talk to God. Amen. Talk to God. Just start out over. Stop taking all that medicine, made me sleep and crazy and crying. The psalmist said, "Hope in God." He says, "God gives us, gives us hope in the midst of all circumstances." Amen. God gives us hope. Gotcha. He gives us strength, and He assured us that we can be victorious even over depression through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. He gives us the victory. Amen. So hold on to the victory. Mm -hmm. Keep talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep talking to God. Mm -hmm. Keep reminding yourself of the great testimonies of what God has already done. That's right. And he will bless us every time. There may be somebody who have not received Jesus as your Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him. If you can believe this story that we talk about, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, you can be encouraged by God even on tonight. 
It was Jesus who died on Calvary, who they killed and laid in a barred tomb. It was an awful murder of a man who deserved good, but he got bad. The same Jesus they laid in a barbed tomb rose from the dead. Oh, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same power can save you tonight. If you can believe this story, trusting that this story will get you to heaven, we just bow your head with me and repeat after me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, trust in Jesus as your personal Savior, that you're now born again, that you are saved, that you're on your way to heaven. And during this season, I want to pray for us who, who have difficulties, who have situations that are just not good for us. As we close out this year, as we come into holidays one after the other, let me remind you, God has not forgotten you. Father God, we come lifting those who, who are discouraged, those who are depressed, Those, Father God, who are disappointed. Those who suffer defeat. And those who have actually seen the shadows of death. We ask you to give them the victory. Hold them. Bless them and keep them. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Now there may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home, or looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you would, inbox me and let me know you want to join the New Beginning Church, the great church in Southeast Houston, that you will be able to come and fellowship with us here at the New Beginning Church. This Sunday, this Sunday is our grand interest Sunday since COVID-19. We have our grand interest at 10.30 a.m. We're looking for high attendance at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Come and join us. Come and be a part of our service. We're looking forward to celebrating with you and those who will come will be tremendously blessed. We want to pray for Sister Irving and Brother Dixon in the, in the passing away, the transition of their sister. I want to lift them uh, before the Lord in prayer during this moment of bereavement. Uh, the funeral service for Sister Carol Dixon will be at the Sugar Creek Church at 4 p.m. on Friday, this Friday, 4 p.m. at the Sugar Creek Church in Sugarland, Texas. Uh, please lift this family before you. That's December 10th, Friday, at 4 p.m. Sugar Creek Missionary Baptist Church, the church at Sugar Creek. That's 13333, 13333, uh, Southwest Freeway, Sugarland, Texas. I want to lift this family.
this for the Lord. Are there any praise reports or prayer requests? Praise reports or prayer requests? Anyone can praise report? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would like to be the next uh, ask for praise for Sister Paula. Praying for Sister Paula Hornsby. Yes. Sister Paula Hornsby lifting her lifting her in prayer. Any other prayer requests or praise report? It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. We thank God for the privilege of giving to Him through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. For those of you who are giving online, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is listing.jesus at yahoo.com. Listing dot Jesus at yahoo.com or you can mail your offering or your tithes in to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 If you're in the building please do not seal your envelope Please do not seal your envelope. I guarantee you it won't crawl out of there. Don't seal it. You'll get credit for it. Amen. Don't seal your envelope. And please fill out your complete envelope. Fill out your envelope. And surely if you have moved or have a different uh, P.O. box or have a different address or apartment number, please put all that valuable information on there. Let's go to God. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Why don't you stand where you are and come and bring your offering before the Lord.
Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Amen. God bless you. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you. You are dismissed.